If you're listening to this podcast, it's probably because a child you love and care for is differently wired. Are they also struggling in their current educational setting, seen only for what they're doing wrong while longing for positive relationships with peers and others? Envision a world where your child's unique abilities are not just recognized, but celebrated. A world where they can connect with others and their true potential is seen and appreciated. The Strength-Based Assessment Lab's mission is to build a world for your child just like that. Through its innovative approach, it aims to empower students, families, educators, and professionals to create positive, effective, and collaborative learning experiences. Be a part of shaping a brighter future for your child. Visit www.bgs.edu to learn more about what a strength-based assessment could mean for your family. That's bgs.edu. That's one way that it can go if you ban something. It can go well. Yeah. That is not, however, what I think is going to happen if you ban Minecraft because Minecraft is an amazing game. So what's the other way it can go then? The other way it can go is you trying to stamp it out actually makes it stronger. Mm -hmm. Right? In what way? Just like Like, what you can have, you want more? Yes, exactly. Like apparently in Horrible Histories, whatever. Anyways, they were talking about Scottish culture and the English tried to stamp out Scottish culture and instead they made it stronger. Mm. Yeah, what doesn't what doesn't kill your love of Minecraft makes it stronger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Welcome to the Tilt Parenting Podcast, a podcast featuring interviews and conversations aimed at inspiring, informing, and supporting parents raising differently wired kids. I'm your host, Debbie Reaver, and today's episode features another conversation with my 12-year-old son, Asher. Asher and I recorded a few episodes focused on the wonderful topic of screen time, and today is a variation on that theme. I know that sometimes conflict over computer games can lead to a parent wanting to totally pull the plug on a game, or maybe even screen time altogether. And as you'll hear in this episode, we once actually did ban a game, Clash of Clans, back when Asher was eight, because the fallout on our family when things didn't go well just wasn't worth it. So that's what we're looking at today, inspired by a post I read on a parenting listserv in which a mother at wit's end was about to take the drastic measure of completely banning Minecraft in her home. We'll also get into the world of Minecraft a bit from a kid's perspective, as Ash will talk about the scenarios that can be particularly challenging. So if you're someone who doesn't quite get what your kid is doing in that pixelated world, you may also learn a few things. No surprise here, but Asher has some strong opinions about this subject matter. Oh, and one more thing. Before we get into our conversation, we're looking to answer your questions for upcoming episodes of the Tilt Parenting Podcast, specifically the Asher episodes. So if there's something that you or your kids would like to hear from Asher on, please send me an email at debbie at tiltparenting.com with your ideas or suggestions, and we'll try to include them. Thanks so much. And as always, thank you for listening. To learn more about this podcast and Tilt, the revolution for parents raising differently wired kids, visit www.tiltparenting.com. Hey, Asher. Hey, Mom. Today, we want to have a conversation kind of about Minecraft and kind of about screen time, but our conversation is stemming because of a thread that came up on a Facebook group that I'm a member of. This is a Facebook... I notice you're not naming names. I'm not going to name names. This is a... No naming of names. This is a Facebook group that's for moms. It's got thousands and thousands of people in it. And this conversation, I won't read it, the whole comment, but it starts with, Minecraft is driving me crazy. (gasps) Sacrilege! (laughs) And... Basically, the gist of the thread is that her 10-year-old son is a kind, sweet child, but Minecraft nice. but Minecraft turns him into um, someone that she says she doesn't recognize. And <gasps> they have tried planning time, they've tried limits, they've tried all different things, but they haven't been able to figure out how to make it work. And so she thinks it's a great game, but she does... She uses. I'll say it's a great game. She uses the word evil because I think it. My <gasps> hunch is more sacrilege. <laughs> my hunch is that it's been created a lot of stress in their lives, and so what she says is, "I may just ban it." <gasps> Still more sacrilege. So this post got over forty comments. <gasps> 
So it definitely struck a nerve and a lot of moms were jumping on adding their two cents and some people were for banning, some were against banning. And I mentioned it to you because I thought it was interesting and I knew that you would have a really strong point of view yeah. about the whole concept of A, whether Minecraft is evil and B, whether or not you think banning is a good plan. So where do you want to start with this conversation, Asher? Well, about the concept of Minecraft being evil. Okay. It's a it's a wonderful game. It's all about building and creating things. Except for jerks who can't do it themselves. Then they're, they're like, if I can't create nice things, then nobody else will either. And then they ruin the game for everyone else. So you've been playing Minecraft for a very long time. It has to have been at least four years, maybe more. <laughs> it's a long time to yeah. be playing a game. And so you've been with the game for a long time and you've had highs and lows with the game maybe you could explain when you have had challenges with minecraft what were they about well there have been people i'm not naming names okay (laughs) who have an attitude like if i can't build nice things then nobody else will either and as soon as you go away and come back, all your stuff is gone and destroyed. How could that happen? Is that... If if you're on multiplayer. What I is... suspect that might have something to do with the problem. What it's, can you explain what multiplayer is? It's when you have a world that runs in real time. Mm-hmm. People can pop on and pop off anytime they want and do anything they want while they're on it. Is that the same thing as being on a server? Yeah, that is being on a server. I just... Okay. A server is just a perpetual Minecraft world that stays open. Okay. And so if you're on a server where there are other people and you can't control what they're doing, then things could happen while you're not online. And when you come back on, then all your stuff is ruined. Actually, I'm remembering now that this happened when you were in second grade. (laughs) (laughs) A long time ago. There was a problem. Yes. Far, far away. (laughs) I do remember that now. So, all right. So that's one thing that can be challenging. What are some other aspects of Minecraft that have been challenging for you? Well, sometimes I got fed up because it took so much time to do things. Mm -hmm. And there's one aspect of the game that I hate. I really wish they took something against. But with a little teetery Mm -hmm. that I'm pretty good at. What's that? Command blocks. Okay. If you use these special commands that... They're really simple, actually, but I'm not going to go into detail. Okay. That that doesn't really fit the podcast. So there's an aspect, just so I'm clear. Yeah. There's an- it's when you die, all your items disappear. Oh. So that means you, you're you like, yay, I have full diamond armor, and now I'm about to go mine for the stronghold so I can find the end portal end, and you fall in some lava and die, and all your items burn up. Oh. Okay. That sort of scenario would have me going like, yeah! <laughs> Okay. And then there's also the mini games. I know we've had trouble um, yeah, with mini games. Yeah, those are on servers that y- that are heavily modded. People ma- write special code to make it so that you can play games in a game. Meta games. <gasps> <laughs> the meta game. Okay. Yeah. And those games within games. <gasps> what if life is just a game? Then it's a meta meta game. No. <laughs> so. So, yeah, those games... Can be like my favorite one is one where you it's PvP, right? Which stands for player versus player. Mm-hmm. That means there are like five people on this side, five people on this side. There's turf, right? That's the ground, and it's very complicated. But essentially, whenever you kill an enemy player, you get this much turf, and if your turf covers the enemy spawn point, you win. Okay, so and that's my favorite. That, and that is one particular mini game. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, these are things that have can, have frustrated you in the past. And um, some of them... Yeah, like, for example, I, there are some times when I'm just about to hit somebody and they move at the last second. Mm-hmm. Like, I can see my arrow and it's like one inch from their head and they move like one pixel to the left there or just misses them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, That's not- so basically you can have... Annoying situations in games. Within games. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Within meta games. Yeah. Okay. So we have had challenges in the past. 
And I imagine another one of the challenges is that I've noticed that you didn't bring up is also just the idea of sometimes it's hard to turn off. Oh, yeah. Because I'm, 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 I'm not that good at predicting how long things are going to take sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I only need five more minutes. And I realize I have to do something else. And I'm like, but I only need five more minutes, and I only need five more mm-hmm. minutes, and it usually ends up taking a lot longer. And you're I, you're not alone in this. And then I come <laughs> to the, and then I finally get ready with my thing finished, and like dinner's already cold. And yeah, it's past bedtime. That doesn't really happen. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> so let's go back to the email or the the thread on the Facebook group about banning with this mother feeling like banning the game was the only way to address the issue well there are two ways something can go if you try to ban something yeah what's that you can either succeed and you've stomped out whatever thing you were trying to ban Mm -hmm. like like i used to play clash of clans i remember clash of clans i still (laughs) when i think about it yeah yeah we succeeded in banning it and now I'm actually grateful for it. Mm, so Because it was a really bad game in the first place. It was designed to be really addicting and make you want to spend all your money. So Clash and, of Clans, let's just... And check it all the time. That was, yeah, Clash of Clans for those podcast listeners. It's still a very popular game. And Annoying it might enough. be something that a lot of kids are still playing. And for us... I remember when you started playing Clash of Clans and you were instantly drawn in and it was very intense from the start. And we noticed... Basically how it works is Mm -hmm. that you have this little village and you attack other people's little villages. Mm -hmm. And while you're away, they attack your little village. Mm -hmm. And these are real people. So like when you... When you come back online, your village is nearly always destroyed. And then you're like, curse you, mister! Not naming names. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a persistent world? Yeah, is that what it's called? A persistent? Yes, completely persistent. And you can't choose who you attack. Like, you press the button, and you're just attacking a real random person. Right. So and without- they're going to come online and be really, really ridiculously pissed at you and not be able to get revenge. It's not really the best game design. Well, it's not the best game design in one respect and in yeah. the other. It's a great game design because it's really addictive. Yes. Right? Personally, if I were going to make a game that involved people's entire work getting completely wrecked, I would add in a revenge feature. <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 Ah, uh, revenge. The I thing that make, makes the world go round. I'd make it, no. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I, would, I wouldn't make it personal. Like in Clash of Clans, I mean, you just know some person on the planet completely destroyed you. Mm-hmm. And couldn't care less. Okay. So with Clash of Clans, I distinctly remember us having, it felt like we were having an intervention with you. Daddy and I sat you down on the couch and we had, we said, we have something very important we need to talk with you about. I think it was at our, we were having weekly family meetings at the time. Yeah. And I remember telling you that your dad and I had decided that Clash of Clans and I was, really was not going to be part of our life anymore. Yeah. Yes. To say you were really pissed is, yeah. Is, is, is. Putting is, it mildly. When we first banned Clash of Clans, you were furious. Yes, but eventually I calmed down. Now I realize that it's a horrible game. What made you realize that? Part of it was that it got me in huge trouble. Mm-hmm. And the other part of it was that I was just like, wait a minute. This is really not a very good game whatsoever. Why? The, the whole thing that ruins it is making it so that you attack other people. Mm-hmm. They didn't do that, then it would be a, a fun Darren and I are prepping for a big move at the moment, so we are fully leaning into any and everything that simplifies things, and that absolutely includes mealtimes. At a time when my executive functioning skills are being pushed to the limit, even planning and executing dinner for our family these days can feel like a really big lift. That's why I'm especially grateful for Green Chef, a meal service that offers pre-measured and prepped ingredients to my door. 
Each box is packed with foods you can feel good about, like whole fruits and vegetables, plus lean protein and whole grain options. In fact, one of the things I love most about Green Chef is that they offer options that prioritize gut and brain health, with science-backed recipes that feature ingredients like fiber, antioxidants, and omega-3 fatty acids. During this time of lots of stress, it feels really grounding to know we're supporting ourselves nutritionally. I will take all the support I can get. And Green Chef doesn't just cover dinner recipes. I can add high quality breakfasts, lunches, and snacks to my weekly box from Green Market. Green Chef has a special offer for Tilt listeners. Go to greenchef.com slash tilt50 and use code tilt50 to get 50% off plus 20% off your next two months. That's 50% off plus 20% off your next two months when you use the code tilt50 at greenchef.com slash tilt50. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Maybe I've watched too many seasons of The Amazing Race, but every time I have to go somewhere on the subway, I treat it like a competition. It's all about making the right gut decisions about which route will get me there the fastest. Sometimes those decisions get me where I'm going early, and other times my gambles don't really pay off. Probiotics can't help with most gut decisions, but if your gut needs a little support, Ritual has your back. Their Symbiotic Plus, a three-in-one supplement, has clinically studied prebiotics, probiotics, and a postbiotic to support a balanced gut microbiome. I've been using Symbiotic Plus for about six months now, and it's become a core part of my morning routine. I take the mini capsule every morning while making my way through my inbox, whether I'm at home or I'm on the road, because it doesn't need to be refrigerated. And the capsule itself is delayed released, which helps it survive the harsh conditions of the upper GI tract for delivery to the colon. And that's exactly where we want it to go. Ritual invested in a study modeling the human colon, which showed that Symbiotic Plus significantly increased microbial diversity and the growth of beneficial bacteria. There's no more shame in your gut game. Symbiotic Plus and Ritual are here to celebrate, not hide your insides. Get 25% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash tilt. Start Ritual or add Symbiotic Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash tilt for 25% off. Well, I think you also realized, even though it was yeah. you missed the game, you realized that you were spending a lot of time yeah. upset and angry. And you were probably... It wasn't worth it. Yeah, my hunch is that you were relieved to be released of that, like, stressor in your life. Yeah. So, okay, so that's so one way... i be like, oh, crap, I bet you someone killed my whole village and yeah. all the things I was training and all of my potions and all of my stuff that I paid money for and... Yeah, it was kind of always lingering. You wanted to yeah. check it all the time and check it and see what was going on. I remember that. Mm. I still have nightmares about that. No, just kidding. Um, So, okay. So that's one way that it can go if you ban something. It can go well. Yeah. That is not, however, what I think is going to happen if you ban Minecraft because Minecraft is an amazing game. So what's the other way it can go then? The other way it can go is you trying to stamp it out actually makes it stronger. Mm -hmm. Right? In what way? Just like Like, what you can have, you want more? Yes, exactly. Like, apparently they... In Horrible Histories, whatever. Anyways, they were talking about Scottish culture, and the English tried to stamp out Scottish culture, and instead they made it stronger. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. what, doesn't, what doesn't kill your love of Minecraft makes it stronger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what doesn't kill your love of Minecraft makes you stronger. <laughs> so, okay, I agree with you. Yeah, and that's what I think it's going to go mm-hmm. if they ban Minecraft. Because Minecraft is awesome. I'm curious to know if you have... If you were able to talk to this mother who posted and was saying, I feel like I have no option but to ban it, what suggestions do you have for how to... Why don't you have a talk with your kid and and brainstorm and things? What do you mean? Brainstorm about what? Well, that's what we did with screen time planners, remember? Mm Mm-hmm. We had a talk and we brainstormed why screen time wasn't... Why our current screen time system wasn't working. Yeah, we did... And now we have a great strategy. We actually used this... It's from the Positive Discipline book, and I will share the link to that in the (gasps) show notes. But there is a basically a joint problem solving strategy that we used where we both share what we see is the problem. And then we both come up with ideas together. Right. So that's what you would suggest this mom do. Yes, exactly. Like, for example, we were like, your concerns are 
or like, I like it's bad for me and my concerns are it's bad for me too. And our solution was we should make it less time. I mean, totally. That's exactly how it went. <laughs> no. That's not how it went down. But I, what I like <laughs> about... What I, that one? <laughs> what I like about the joint problem-solving approach that we used then and we still use it. We still have to revisit this a lot when it comes to other games and other, you know, and when screen time, we kind of slip back into old habits. But what I like about the joint problem solving is that it's very respectful. Yeah. It's not like we're banning this. It's what do you think about this? So how do you think using that approach benefits kids? It's because you, if if it's just like we're doing this, then you feel like you have no choice in what you're doing yourself. You feel completely powerless. Do you feel like you have learned how to understand yourself and your own kind of challenges and what you need better through doing the joint problem yeah. solving approach? Yeah, I do. Because it tells me what other people's concerns about me are too. And that helps me realize things I never would have realized myself. Cool. So just for pretend for a moment, Asha, that you have a chance to talk to all parents who, whose child is really engaged in a game. Child or children. Or children are really engaged in a game like Minecraft or maybe Clash of Clans or something. And they have had it up to here. The screen time limits aren't working. And their, their gut instincts just say, that's it. We're done. You're done with screen time. What would you say to them? I would say don't do that it will probably result in the second option of what happens when you try to ban something. You'll you'll only increase their burning lust for screen time. (laughs) I'm so poetic. And it also doesn't give an opportunity for... Yeah, you feel like you're not in control if someone just comes up to you and says, no more screen time. Okay. And that is what all the parents who have... (laughs) No, they don't sound like that. (laughs) Well, some of them don't. (laughs) <laughs> well, this has been a really interesting conversation. I have a feeling we're going to be talking about screen time again because... Mm, it's very important. It's kind of a very... It's kind of... Yeah, it's really important for, for modern kids. It is. It was not a part of my childhood. I can tell you that, but it's... How sad. I don't think it's going anywhere, and but I do think it is one of the biggest stressors that I see between parents and kids is figuring how how to negotiate that balance so thank you for sharing your thoughts today you're welcome thank you so much for listening to this episode of the tilt parenting podcast for the show notes for this episode including links to everything asher and i talked about even the games visit the show notes page at tiltparenting.com slash session 27 and our audience is continuing to grow so thank you so much for helping us spread the word If you like what you're listening to and want to help us connect with more listeners, please consider taking a minute to post an honest review on iTunes or share the Tilt podcast on your Facebook page or Facebook groups with parents who might find what we're doing here interesting. Lastly, thanks again for tuning in today. For more information on the Tilt Revolution, to sign up for our community and learn more, visit www.tiltparenting.com. Are you overwhelmed by the things that get in the way of you doing what you want to do? Are you looking for ways to simplify life to better align with your values? Do you want to create space in your schedule so you have room for more of the good stuff? Play, joy, relationships, gratitude, and more? If you answered yes to any of these questions, I invite you to check out Edit Your Life, a podcast to help you edit the unnecessary from your life so you have more room to enjoy the awesome. Through episodes with me, Christine Co, and a range of super smart, compassionate, and thoughtful guests, you'll come away with big picture insights and practical ways to declutter your home, schedule, and mental space without getting bogged down by perfection. I have always believed that small moments and actions matter tremendously. My goal is to help you find agency and space in your life through doable baby steps that will leave you feeling accomplished instead of overwhelmed. Check out Edit Your Life wherever you enjoy your podcasts.